Here we are back for another PsyApps video. Uh, my name is Don Sackett. I am one of the founders of PsyApps. And today is a great day here for video making because my co-founder, Dr. David Day, <laughs> has joined us for this video. Dave is one of the inventors of this, fair to say? One of several, the main, yeah. The main inventor? Uh, contributed one, a little contributed bit to it. Contributed a little bit, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Where's all that modesty when I'm asking you? Anyway, so Dave's here. He's going to show, he's going to help us demo this great new CSI unit. So this unit we're introducing here is called the Z901 CSI. And CSI stands for carbon and silicon. So as you might have guessed, this unit just measures carbon and silicon. So when we came out with this unit, the accountants all said, why are you making a unit that just does carbon so you can charge less money for it? And here's why we did this, because we've been selling the full LIBS unit for carbon and all the other elements for several years now. We've got over a thousand of them in the field. They're approved for use virtually everywhere in the world. But uh, so many of our customers also have XRF units. This is our XRF unit. See, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter with XRF. And XRF's great on metals, and people love using XRF for metals because it's faster and it's easier to use than LIBS, and it takes less operator training than LIBS, and there's less sample prep because you're not really you're not doing carbon with XRF. So a lot of these customers said, you know, look, I just want to use my LIBS for carbon. I want to use my XRF for everything else. So can you make us a unit that just does, just does carbon and maybe silicon too if I'm doing it? carbon equivalents. So that's what we did. I went to the I went to the guru here and I said, hey Dave, can we make just a unit that only is carbon and we sell it for less money and it weighs less and it's faster and it looks better? Can you do that? And and this is the result of your efforts, right? That's not work. Several of us, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> so here's the unit. And first of all, the first thing you might see is there's the, there's the Argon tank and the new model that's on the side. And the way you change the tank is you reach in here and you pull it out. And this way it's very accessible, um, no matter how big or small your hands are. You change the tank. This is an empty tank right here. You get about five or 600 burns with this tank. Um, but typically you average three tests or so. So you usually might get about 125, 150 actual complete carbon tests. So you do that. That's the Argon. Clips right in there, so it's not a safety hazard. It's not going to fly off, go anywhere, and you're good to go. When you turn the analyzer on, go all the way back to the home screen. Pops on. You have your app, Carbon and Silicon. You, you, uh, you choose that, and the instrument, when you power it on at the start of the day, it goes through about a three-minute automated warm-up cycle now. It gets into the right operating range. That was your, that was another one of your good ideas. Yeah, yeah. I know. So monitors the internal temperature, and then it's good to go. So you do a wavelength cal, which we've already done. You do it again. It's really quick. You tap that. It shoots itself internally. Yep. Gets it comes out. Gets a steel spectrum from the inside of the nose. Yep. And then you're good to go. So let's see. Let's, should we... Uh, yeah, you try this give it a go. Should we? Well, yeah, I think you're feeling good about it. Yeah, right, let's see. Let's of course. See. We've already ground this. We're good to go. So let's show how this thing works. So you pull the trigger, and just like OES, first it does a pre-burn, which is what it's doing now, and then it switches into uh, an actual carbon measurement. And We're looking at several locations so that we get a better uh, chemical average. That's right. That's right. Because that Libs beam is only about what 100 microns. That's or so? about it. Yep. So there you go. It comes up. 047, this is a straight grade uh, stainless. So it knows it's a stainless, but it doesn't say the grade because it's only measuring carbon. So if, it, so if you don't know nickel, chrome, and moly, you can't identify what stainless is. That's what the XRF is for. So let's do another test. Again, another pre-burn, another test. And you see in blue is the average, and then in yellow is, the, is each successive reading. And there you go. So the second test came in at 048. So that's pretty good. That's that's very good repeatability. Good work on that. Very good. Excellent. So that is the CSI unit. All right. So let's 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 really put this thing to the test. with L grade. It's really low. This it's one. Really low. This is down around 0.01. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's it's low. It's low for each, you know. L grade cuts off at 03, and this is down around 01, I believe. But we can go look it up. But let's just 
<clears throat> take our shot. Okay. We see in the camera, there's the laser hitting the material. This is the pre-burn. Now we get our first test. So it comes in at 018. See in the blue is the average. We've only shot one. So of course it's gonna be the same as the test. Now we'll do a new test. A lot of times our customers will take two or three tests and average them. There's another good one, 012. Let's do one more. So there you go. Those are three tests on L grade. Only took about 10 seconds, about three ish, three -ish seconds of test. So we can slide over here, see our very first test of 018, and then the next test, 012, and then 013. Often, even though we do a pre burn, that first test can be a little high because it's still, we still haven't burned off all the material. So it's not unusual. And that's why we put this feature in that. Um, if you tap on a test, it'll remove it from the average. So you see the averages. Now you got 012, 013 average of 013. We don't care the last decimal. If you tap it again, it puts it back in the average. So often that very first test, especially on an L grade, might be a little high. And you can just take three tests to throw out the first one. Um, and that's it. So good job. Look at that, man. Yeah. All right. This unit weighs about <clears throat> three and a half pounds. Yeah, I, think I know that's I tend right. to round down, but about three and a half pounds, yeah, maybe a little, that's right. a little more. So it's about the, it's about the same weight as, uh, as some of the other XRFs. This guy's only about 2.7 or 2.8, um, but that's it. So anyway, to recap, you got, we, we certainly make a unit like this, full unit, all the alloy bases plus carbon, but now we've got a carbon only unit. So if you really love XRF and you want to use it for all your other metals, you can use your XRF. You can use this for your carbon or carbon and your silicon. And then we have a new cloud-based uh, data management system that we'll show a little later that'll automatically take the x-ray data and the carbon data, merge them together. And if you're looking at carbon equivalents, it'll then calculate the CE because it has the metals data from this, carbon and silicon from that. Or it can do residuals, but it'll use the right formula, chrome, nickel, copper, or just uh, just uh, nickel and copper, depending on if the carbon is above or below 1.8. So great new technology. Uh, we still make the full carbon units, but we also make this nice, small, slick, beautifully designed, I would say, analyzer. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Gotcha.